in all our lives. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank him for not giving us what we deserve. But giving us grace and mercy. Can I get somebody to just thank him for grace and mercy? house. We bless you in this house. God is so good as we're celebrating the end of Black History Month. You know, I was listening the other day, they were still talking about Tyree Nichols and everything that's taking place with that. And I believe it was Martin Luther King that says that injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. I don't care if it's black on black, white on black, brown on black, green on green, blue on blue. Uh -huh. If it's injustice, it's an injustice. Yeah. 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 You know, we, we got to thank God. We can, you know, we just look back to where he brought us from. Amen. 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 We just got to say thank you, God. 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 This is the day yes. that the Lord has made. Yes, sir. I will rejoice. That means I'm going to command my spirit to rejoice and be glad. And I mean, I'm going to put a smile on my face. No matter what I'm going through, I still can smile while I say, thank you, Jesus. God, you're still worthy. God, we still bless you. We still honor you. We still magnify you. And when I get from there, I'll say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Why? Because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. What you're saying, preacher, you're saying that I, I can stand on it and say, God got me. No matter how bad it looks, God is still good and he still got me. If you have your Bibles, Matthew 17. Verse 20. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Yeah, I thank God that my neighbors came to support us this morning. Y'all wave at them right there. They back there. Amen. Matthew 17, verse 20. Y'all look so good in your you. attire today. You know, I had to push back a couple meals just to get in mind this, this week. <laughs> <laughs> and it reads as thus so Jesus said to them because of your unbelief uh -huh. for assuredly I say to you if you have faith as a mustard seed you will say to this mountain uh -huh. move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask now, God, that you remove me out of the way and replace it with you, Father. Let the words that come out of my mouth, let it echo your heart, Father. Father, right now, let it permeate the hearts of the people and meet them right where they're at, Father. For we thank you, God, and we ask now that you enlarge our territory and increase our faith, God. As we chew on this word, God. Let it manifest in us, God, yes. that we may go stronger in you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Y'all, I thank God for my wife. She's so beautiful and so kind. 
that, that's, that's mine right there, April Rose Miller. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. God is so good. Again, Matthew 17, 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it will move and nothing shall be impossible for you. All right. You know, we talked last week talking about this is the year of the open door. This is my year of new. And I told you last week that this year is going to require all that you have in faith. Amen, amen. As you walk into your new, it's going to take a faith walk. All right. So I'm going to title this scripture, this, this sermon, Faith Walking. All right. So, so on this piece of paper, I have something. I've written something. I can you see it? No. Huh? You can't see it. There's something on there. Uh huh. I see. It's so, look at he like, he like. You can't see. <laughs> but I put something on there. The size of faith that you just need to get started. Mm. Mustard seed faith is all you need to get started. Now, as you grow in Christ, your faith ought to grow. But just to begin as a believer, it's right there. Right there. So you mean to tell me that's all I need to move the mountain. Amen. So, so let's let's talk about this thing. What is faith? And the dictionary gonna define it as this: it's a belief or a trust or belief in devotion to or trust in somebody or something, especially without logical proof. All right. Key word: without logical proof. It says a religion or a religious group, a system or religious belief, or the group of people who adhere to it, trust in God, belief in, and devotion to God. Uh-huh. Now the Bible says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, if I can challenge you for a minute, we're going to go logic versus God. All right. Logic says clear, rational thought and a sensible reason. Now, if, if I got any believer in here, they understand ain't nothing about God sensible or reasonable. Amen. 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 God says in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Uh For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. And my thoughts than yours. Uh Logic says something that makes sense. (laughs) But God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding, meaning it ain't gonna make sense. Right. Yes, sir. What God has for you, what God's gonna do for you, what God's thought of you, it doesn't make sense logically. Uh-huh. Well, well, what I want to say it like this: do not attempt to confine God to your logical box. That cannot even begin to contain how awesome he is. We can't even contain his glory. Amen. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, we, we, we try to put God in this box where, well, you know, I'm only gonna, it, 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 if, it, if it don't make sense, it don't, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. That's what we say, that's what we say. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. So we try to put God in this box to where we can comprehend. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. And while we're putting them in the box of our comprehension, we're missing out on the greatness of God. Yes. yes. Thank you, God. Hmm. Hmm. That's it. Hmm. That is it. The very thought of God boggles my mind. 
Because he's always, it's always something new about him when I read about him. Yeah. When I spend time with them, when I when I when I when I when I, when I commune with them, uh, I find out something new every time. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Where I thought I had it figured out, God said, "Nah, you, you thought you knew me. <laughs> uh, uh, let me show you this side of me. It's something new every time." Yeah. 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 I spent, but but if you ain't got nothing new from God, when the last time you spent time with them? All right, now. All right. All right. So sometimes our blessings or what we're seeking after is not revealed unto us because we have not taken the time to spend with God. To say, God, reveal unto me. Because it says new mercies I... He takes us from glory to glory. I can't operate in old glory trying to get something new. You know, I, 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 I got an uncle. And, uh... He, he, he swear he was the best football player of the family. He swear he was the best basketball player of the family. But I promise you, in all my years of living, I have never seen him play, uh, shoot a basketball yet because his knees always been messed up. <laughs> so, so, but, but he gonna tell you how, oh, nephew, you oh, I used to get that rock, ah, ah, and I go up, ah, I'm like, oh, I ain't seen it yet. <laughs> But he's living in his past glory. Yes. yes we get so consumed in the past glory that we forget God trying to give us a new glory. Amen. And that past glory, when we, it begins to wear off and we're still trying to make it relevant. Remember I told you what happened in 23 ain't going to work in 24. Yes. We're operating in new, so that old glory, let it be where it's going to be. Yeah. You know, you know, and, and, and understand, understand. I, 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 I did a sermon called the Valley Experience, but you have to understand that every valley is in between two mountains. Yes, it is. Oh my, oh my. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, in order for me to get to the top, I gotta go through some stuff. But in that valley is where I'm getting nurtured, because in that valley is where streams flow. In that valley is where the best grass and the best nutrients are planting stuff. So while I'm in the valley, I'm getting what I need to get to my next mountain. But you have to have faith to understand that I'm going through the valley, but I've already won. Yeah. You gotta understand I'm going, I'm taking the test, but I'm already a winner. Okay. Your faith says it. Yeah. But see, see, so many times we're trying to see faith. Yeah. We're trying to see faith, and if you're like me, every day my eyes are getting bad, worse and worse and body by the day. So I ain't gonna be able to see it too much longer. <laughs> I ain't gonna be able to try and see it too much longer. So I have to believe that God said in his word, faith comes by. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. So I know if, if we try to put God in that box and we try to, 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 to contain God, uh -huh. we get what is called a system crash. And this is what happens when we try to figure God out. He overloads us to where we just, you know, a computer will crash on you when you put too much on it and it start <laughs> overload. God is so big that we spend time trying to figure him out. We're going to crash. We're going to be like, oh, wait a minute, God, you didn't just blew my mind again. So, so let's talk about. Faith as a basis of a Christian characteristics. It's the root from which all qualities of Christian character spring. So all true morality is born of spirituality and all complete morality is born of the spiritual created and maintained by Christian faith. The Christian life is begun, continued, and consumed by faith. We are saved by faith. We walk by faith. And someday we shall receive the end of our faith. Oh, that's it. And faith is obedience. Well, what are you saying? Well, you know, they say obedience is better than sacrifice. But faith is when you obedience in your faith, when you disobedient, that means you don't trust what was said. Mm -hmm. You don't trust the outline. Mm -hmm. You don't trust the outcome. 
Now he's already said you're more than a conqueror. Uh -huh. He said you, you have the victory. He said you already defeated the enemy. Uh -huh. So when you already know, he said you should be the head and not the tail. You should be the lender and not the borrower. But you need to act accordingly. That's right, that's right, that's right. See, a lot of times we miss it because we're not acting how we're supposed to act. He's already told us, I ain't never know, you know, you know, you know, I used to tell my team, I used to say, you got to see it before you, you know, you, you, know, you, know, you got to believe it before you see it. Yes, you got to know you're already a champion. Uh -huh. You got to know you are, and you know, I, I used to treat them, I, I, I used to tell them, I can do all, I, say, I make them to say it loud, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I make them believe that they are champion already, nothing going to stop you. Yeah. So now carry yourself. As such. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. As believers, we start carrying ourselves less than what God created us uh, to be. Uh, 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 Why? Because we're not believing the, the end game, uh, what God had already told us. So, 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 faith is obedience, therefore defines faith as a steadfast trust uh, conjoined with obedience. It should be stressed that true obedience to the will of God must be prompted by faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. That's it. So an attempt to uh, build Christian character apart from faith will end in defeat. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can't call myself a Christian and act as a Christian if I don't uh, have faith with it. Uh -huh. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yes. For he who comes to God must believe that he is... And that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So the, the, the scripture con makes the connection between acceptable obedience and genuine faith. Oh, Hebrews. Hebrews says, uh, but it does not teach a dead faith. In Hebrews, the 11th chapter, it says faith is called the faith chapter. It does not teach a dead faith. Why? Because faith able, by, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But by faith, Noah prepared an ark for the saving of his household. All right. uh -huh. By faith, Abraham obeyed. True faith obeys. Yes, it does. So how do I build my faith? Mm -hmm. Paul tells us in Romans 10 and 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what are you listening to? Who are you listening to? Yeah. You, you ever understood, uh, I said this in Bible study, uh, you ever understood that sometimes you can be sitting there and subconsciously, you hear some music playing. You, you just start tapping your beat. Next thing you know, the song is in you. You just, and you be going all day like, man, I don't know why I'm singing this song all day long. Because the wave has penetrated you. It didn't hit you. So you have to understand, you have to guard your heart so, and your ears. So what are you listening to? Uh-huh. So if you're not listening, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're not daily making it a regiment to hear something of God's word, spending time with him, listening to some people that's going to pour into you. Yeah. Maybe, you got, maybe you got a Bible study group. Maybe you got, you got to get on the text chain with pastor every morning. Whatever it is you got to do to instill some, to build your faith. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a muscle. You know, I'm glad Leonard here today. Because I can't get this muscle right if I don't work it. <laughs> if I don't work my faith, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to grow. It's a muscle that has to be worked. Exercised. Utilized. And then who are you listening to? You know, sometimes you need to change your circle. Because <laughs> if your friends don't have bigger faith for you than you got for yourself, you need to change your circle. Yeah. I want to be around people that's going to push me. They're going to say, nah, nah, I ain't going to let you fall. I see greater for you. I see bigger for you. I see better for you. I don't need to be around the naysayers. I 
don't need to be around the ones that say, man, you know what? I think I can do this. They be like, I don't know about that. Check your circle. Who are you listening to? The Bible says, and, and, and I just want to encourage you and build your faith right here. The Bible says, God will never leave nor forsake you. Okay, that didn't hit nobody. By his stripes, I am healed. That still missed somebody. Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Oh, you ain't caught the wave yet. God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Oh, that ain't touched nobody yet. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Okay, somebody going to catch this one. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall not run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Okay, maybe this 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 will bless somebody. No weapon that is formed against me. Hmm. Okay, bring the whole tide into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. It says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough. All right, maybe this will grab you. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. I'm just trying to build your faith right now. This is my favorite, and this is all that needs to be said. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not go. Matter of fact, I just say it like this. The Lord is, and you throw out there what he is to you. <laughs> Call him what he is to you. What do you need? The Lord is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting I'm only increasing your faith. I'm trying to grow it right now. For all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. Unto the glory of God by us. (laughs) See, some of y'all got caught up in the beginning, but the Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Oh, when my enemies come against me, said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Oh, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a stand against them. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, God got my back. Oh, come on. I'm faith walking in this thing. Somebody say, God got me. <laughs> That's the wrong neighbor. They ain't shot on your behalf. Somebody look at another neighbor. Go across the aisle and say, God got me. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I feel this in the spirit realm. I need everybody to get up and start walking in faith. Start walking over some things that you've been asking God for. Just start believing in God. God, I'm walking. I know you got me. You said you had to supply every one of my needs. God, I'm blessing you. And then, oh God, my God, bless God. God, you do it, God. God, you do it, God. You do it, God. You do it, God. In the name of Jesus, you do it, God. with this. Yes, yellow, yellow, yellow. And we're going to shout on it. Yellow, yellow, yellow. 
I need somebody to get a shouting partner. So get, get you a, a faith partner. Somebody get you a faith partner. Grab you a faith. Somebody that's going to intercede with you. Somebody that'll fight with you. Grab you a faith partner right now. Because we're going to shout on this one right here. Are you ready? In Numbers 23 and 19, it says, God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. Hath he said it, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? And I shall say it like this, God can't lie. God don't lie. God won't lie. For I dare you make a lie. Heads lifted all over. Yes, God. Hallelujah. As you lift your hands, that's your sign of surrender. Saying, God, in this year, I will not neglect you. I'm taking my hands off of it. Your will will be done. Everything concerning me, God. It will come to pass. Somebody just give it over to him. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to confess it out loud. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to confess it out loud. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to confess it out loud. God, I'm going to wait on you, God. I'm going to seek your will, God.